Hello YouTube, got ourselves another lawnmower to fix today. Don't know what's wrong with it. Just know that uh, you don't want to pull because the blade's bent real bad on the bottom. So we'll see what we can do and see if we can't get her fixed up and run it again. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Alright. So the first thing we can do is take see just how badly bent this is well then that's not supposed to be like that so you see here that blades all sorts of caddy wampus see that's you're not gonna be able to do nothing with that blade I think the fellow must have hit a rock or a stump or something pretty hard to bend like that so go ahead and pull that off of there and then get to working on the motor so as you can see here I have upgraded a nice half inch Campbell Housefield impact which is another reason why you be good buddies with the guy that runs the hardware store because I found this in my clearance so go ahead and pull this off of here just like that whole lot easier than doing it with a wrench so there's that there's this I reckon we could still use it if I could bend that out I don't know might be worth it might not so I'll go ahead and flip this back on its side upright see if we can get it turned over All right, she's got compression. So, now it's time to tear into it and see why she won't fire. It's either a spark, which is probably it, and probably a gas, and probably a fuel intake issue with the carburetor. Generally how these things work, just like the last one. All right, now that we got it tore down to the very basics of what you need, I think I'm not a man up taking that carburetor off, but definitely needs a filter because there ain't no air getting through that whatsoever. So there's on a to-do list. And then this spark plug here, she don't, she might just be gapped wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and just replace it with all the gunk that's on there and whatnot. I reckon she's followed out there on that electrode end there because it's not, it's it's coming straight down onto it so uh we'll get those two items there now unfortunately with this design i can't install my redneck uh, electric start so they done riveted that uh pull start right in place but uh we'll get her done anyhow so and on top of what else i found too we're gonna have to remove there's a cutoff cable at this end right here that uh it's completely broken, so you can't get her to fire at all if you ain't got that working right. So we'll go ahead and get after that next. You know what? I'm going to go on a little rant about this. This is not the first time. Probably won't be the last time, I'm sure. But I've been working on a few of these motors and whatnot, and I keep finding the same issue. Either it doesn't have a freaking air filter in it or in this condition. It's not that hard to change out. It's not that hard to take care of. They're not expensive. And... This way you can keep a decent mower for a whole lot longer than it normally does. 
I, I don't get what the hang up is here. It's not hard, it's an easy fix. Just change your air filter six months, a year, depending on where you're at. It's not a hard thing to do. All right, so I think I lied earlier about the uh, redneck electric start because I'm gonna end up taking this whole shroud off in order to bypass this safety here. Because uh, this cable's broke, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, take that off of there now and take and fix that to where you don't need it anymore and we'll get right on it. Alright, so the safety cable's been removed. So now, once I actually get this up and running, you'll see I'll be able to still stop it by finger right there just like that. Goes back and forth real easy. Alright. Alright, now we're back with a fancy new air filter and a new spark plug for her. Got her from the local tractor supply and now we'll see. Next step is to make sure we get spark. Make sure that coil is good and the electrical system is working alright on it. Go ahead and install, just put that right on the wire here, just like so, and go redneck electric start there, we'll just turn her over a few times, make sure she sparks. Okay, so we got spark. Now, we'll go ahead and put this spark plug inside the head. Just like so. And go ahead and see if she fires off in there and make sure we got compression and spark going to start the motor just for a little bit. Let it run on that ether. All right, so what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get that carburetor full of fuel. I'm going to take and open this up. Reattach the gas tank. Put some fuel in here. Now the gas tank was empty, bone dry. So that's actually a good thing. It means no bad gas was sitting there. Didn't get all varnished up in that carburetor. Messed nothing up. So hopefully we can get her to fire off without too much extra hassle here. Clamp around there like that. Set that right about there. See, and this one came with fuel cap too. Minty. You don't need to worry about safety spots. Just put a little splash of fuel in there. It's probably got some methanol in it, but it'll be all right. Let that drain into the system. Set this kind of out of the way a little bit. Make sure that electric stops in the right spot. See what happens. Ooh, she wanted to fire. And she fires off and cut out as soon as that came back on there. So, mission accomplished. Don't even have to rebuild the carburetor, clean the carburetor, or nothing. Now all we got left to do is put her back together and, well, I'm going to go ahead and 
clean this off and put her back together. All right, well, I figured out that since I'm going to be planning on reselling this, not keeping it, I might as well fix that cable on there. But I'm not spending 30 bucks for a new cable. When I stood in the housing still works all right, and I got electric fence wire still left over from, well, who knows when. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this wire right on through, and we'll have a safety cable back in place. It'll be all to work just fine. And now we're up to the end. That's the focus there. Pull on that. There, now you got all sorts of wire to work with here. And then, take and reinstall it into the switch. Run that cable up there where you're supposed to attach to normally. Twist it around a couple times, just as good as the other one. So as you can see right there, took that electric fence, wound it up a couple times there. Now we need to put this spring on here so I can get the proper measurement for the other end of it. See, just like that. Electric fence, replacement of that cable, works like a charm. Nothing to it. A whole lot better and a whole lot faster and waiting on something to come in the mail. And cheaper too. And now I'm going to go ahead and use some compressed air and blow her out and uh, get her cleaned up and put back together. Runs good, just needs a blade and all. But just remember, you can always use stuff around the house or on the farm to fix whatever it is you need fixed, and you ain't got to get the new stuff all the time on replacing parts. So, just like prime example was that there cable. Nothing to it, just a little bit of know how and understanding how that cable works. And we got it running and good to go. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a good one.